Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Most of San Antonio saw rain this morning, but the heavier, healthier rain is stayed to our south and west. And we know we could use even more. Let's check in with meteorologist Sarah Spivey for an update on the forecast. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Myra and Steve. Yeah, we're seeing some light rain west of San Antonio near Divine, right along that 35 corridor, and then also out toward Castroville along Highway 90. But this is very, very light rain. Really, if you want to look at the more heavier rain, we have to go closer to Del Rio. In fact, we'll turn on the radar that's out there out west, and you can see very clearly Del Rio Valverde County, Eagle Pass, Maverick County getting the heavier rain. This is all that low pressure system that brought us the rain this morning in San Antonio and some very healthy rains to the south and to the west. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about rainfall totals and how that has helped the drought. Outside right now, it is 87 degrees, not too hot outside. That's nice. A 20% chance for an isolated shower through about 8. And then afterwards, it's just going to be a mostly cloudy and gusty evening. More on those rainfall totals and how it could potentially help the drought. Of course, we'll also talk about the chance for some more rain in our near future. Steve. All right. See you in a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. Will a decision be made? The Uvalde School Board will be meeting in 30 minutes. No long open forum discussion is expected. Instead, their agenda includes discussions about the future of District Police Chief Pete Arredondo. An attorney is expected to provide consultation about his termination hearing. Lee Waldman in Uvalde this evening where the legal discussion will also include Rob Elementary. In the board's closed door meeting with their attorney, they'll be getting an update on the legal issues surrounding the Robb Elementary property. We know previously the district has said no students will go back to that campus and it will be demolished. They'll also talk about a partnership with the district and the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation, as well as the possible purchase of the property. Last school board meeting, we heard about the district's plan for virtual schooling for anyone who requested it. Tonight, the attorney will talk to the board about a joint representation with Carnes City. City ISD. When the board comes out of their closed door session, they'll be having a discussion on each of those topics with the people in attendance. There's also possibility for action on each. We'll bring you the full wrap tonight on the Night Beat. In Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. Now, some help is coming to the survivors of the Robb Elementary mass shooting. Some of the students who are transferring to Sacred Heart Catholic School in that city are getting full scholarships. 30 scholarships will be awarded by the nonprofit Catholic Extension. Uvalde parents say it adds a little relief to their lives as they try to move forward. The nonprofit will also provide six nuns to be at school the first week to provide on site emotional assistance to students. For the first time since 2019, the Texas Education Agency has released accountability ratings for area school districts. It's been a few years since the TA, TEA released these scores because of the pandemic, but it looks as though despite COVID, school districts are improving. In San Antonio and the surrounding areas, only three districts received the not rated label, which is a score lower than 70, but one district is a standout showing huge improvements at Southside ISD. It's great to see that their hard work and dedication has paid off. Uh, it's been quite an improvement. Uh, we went from 6F campuses to uh, 5B campuses and 1A campus. Southside ISD celebrating the big news with staff and students at Heritage Elementary. The school previously got an F and jumped up to an A, only one of two schools in the state to do that. Big congrats to them. You can find the full rundown of area school ratings on KSAT.com, along with all of our return to class coverage. Each COVID-19 variant and subvariant brings changes to our daily lives. The main strain right now is BA5, an Omicron subvariant present in 88% of current cases. It is the most infectious strain yet. And viewers have sent in a lot of questions asking about how soon you can be reinfected. Well, our Courtney Friedman ran it through the KSAT Trust Index. 
The BA5 subvariant causing the majority of COVID infection right now tends to cause less serious disease but is more contagious. Things have changed a bit as all things COVID seem to do in the Previously, with the initial strain, after you were infected, we saw that people had natural immunity that would last for at least three months and sometimes much longer. Dr. Jason Bowling is an infectious disease expert for UT Health San Antonio and University Health and has closely watched the differences in reinfection with each COVID strain. Now we're seeing people get infected and then really about four weeks later, they're reinfected with, a, with another COVID infection, believably um, from a similar strain that's related to the initial Omicron. Reinfection is different than a rebound infections, which happen in rare cases when people take the medication Paxlovid, meant to dull infection in high-risk patients like President Joe Biden and Dr. Anthony Fauci. People with a vaccine tend to have a more stronger response and a longer-lasting response. They can still get infected, but they're a little bit better protected from more severe disease. He said people that have the best protection against COVID-19 have had a natural infection and have been vaccinated. So as to whether these current strains can cause faster reinfection, that's true on the KSAT Trust Index. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Great question from our viewers. Now, if you want to submit a question or see more Trust Index stories, just scan the QR code on your screen or go to trust, excuse me, go to ksat.com slash trust index. One driver had to be rescued after crashing into two cars in two separate wrecks on the west side. That crash happened just before 1 a.m. The first one, police say a red car was involved near the downtown area, but kept on driving. Eventually, police say that same car T-boned another vehicle at an intersection before then driving into a nearby fence. The car was found on West Woodlawn Avenue near North Elmendorf Street. Police say four passengers inside that crashed car ran off, but the driver was pinned inside. She was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. No word on the condition of that driver that was T-boned. The San Antonio police trying to piece together a shooting that left three people injured, two of them showing up at the hospital this morning. Police were called to Northeast Baptist Hospital after two women showed up with gunshot wounds just before 2 a.m. Eventually, police learned that that shooting happened on Lock Street near I-35 on the east side after calls from witnesses. Police say two men in a car were also connected to the shooting, with one of them also being injured. The two women were eventually transported to University Hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. In the wake of former President Donald in the wake of former President Donald Trump's defeat, there has been a wave across the nation of challenges to election integrity. Reports of election workers and officials being threatened and intimidated have become more and more common. As Jesse DeGoyado tells us, the latest ones have hit close to home. In front of the Bear County Elections Board for them to read, the article on the Fredericksburg newspaper website, threats, stalking, had led to the resignations of the Gillespie County Elections Administrator and her staff. We are under attack. Bear County Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says she and her staff have seen much the same in the name of election integrity. Threats, meanness, ugliness. Sorry for that. Yes, sir. Later, Republican Chair Jeff McManus told Callanan he was sorry about whoever's behind the bullying and harassment. Then that's a line you don't want to cross. Especially being that many of Callanan's election workers are seniors. You know, I'm not going to let them get hurt or get trashed in any way, so we're going to make sure we have plenty of security. Callanan says as if that's not enough, her office is drowning in frivolous open records requests and for information they can't provide. For instance, they're demanding the source code of all of the election equipment we have. Well, th that can't happen. And it is very tiring, very demoralizing. But there's little doubt Jackie Callanan's management of the elections office has bipartisan support on the elections board. I can't tell her what to do, or no other politician can tell her what to do, and she runs a fair election. She's well-seasoned. She knows her stuff. But will Kellanen's office be able to avoid what's happened in Gillespie County? If this continues to ramp up, we'll see. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. I want to get some breaking news right now. San Antonio police arresting this man for several robberies. They say he may have been involved in others as well. It's 29-year-old Nathan Flores. Investigators say he stole a white Chevy at gunpoint this afternoon. That vehicle soon found on the west side near Riva Street in San Gabriel. 
Police also found Flores and say he confessed to this robbery as well as to one at a convenience store on South Zarsamora yesterday. He's also being questioned in other cases. We'll see what happens here. Happening tomorrow, a job fair with Boeing, which is looking to fill 200 positions at its plant at Port San Antonio. Here's what you need to know. The job fair is from 9 in the morning until 5 p.m. at Workforce Solutions Alamo. That's off South Flora Street. They're looking to hire general electrical and structural mechanics that will work on different types of programs and aircraft. The company also says those with transferable skills from other industries will be considered. For more information, head to KSAT.com. It wasn't like this always, you know, you got, you went to jail, that was it for you. You know, you got a felony, you know, you've been convicted over there, you know, that, that was just, that's your story, that's it. But that is not this man's story. He got a second chance. A new case that explains today is all about second chance hiring. What is it and why are more employers doing it? We'll take you to the Bear County Reentry Center to show you what services they provide. And we meet a woman who says her belief in second chances is thanks to a childhood lesson her dad brought home from jail. A new case that explains is coming up at 630. Also coming up, bring the number of car crashes and pedestrian involved crashes to zero. That's the goal behind this pilot safety campaign happening right here in San Antonio. The dangerous road that is trying to improve and how they're going about it. Let's take a look at traffic out there right now. This is the TransGuide camera I-10 at the Y here right near downtown. Not a trouble spot today. Sometimes it can be, but you can tell the roads no longer wet out there. Things nice and dry and traffic moving smoothly. As students have or are getting ready to return to the classroom, school safety and security is at the top of the minds of many parents and educators. Tonight on Night Beat, we speak with the Texas Education Agency Commissioner about school safety. It's made a pit stop in town. We hear you and we'll do better. And with your help, we'll make Calabria Road safer for everyone. It is considered one of the most dangerous roads in the Alamo City, Calabria Road. It's become notorious, a place for crashes involving cars, yes, but also pedestrians. A new pilot safety campaign aims to create safer solutions. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos tells us what's next. We're here along the 8,000 block of Culebra Road just outside of Loop 410 and according to city officials, over 100 crashes were reported in the last year just a block from where we're standing, which is why many are looking for relief and safety along this busy road. Vision Zero launched a three-month pilot safety campaign that reached over 1,000 responses and today's city leaders and nearby residents came together to find out what problems are plaguing residents. Some of the concerns include congested traffic, pedestrians, not using crosswalks and speeding, which is why officials say part of the solution is to target behavior. This map shows the 44 crosswalks along the 13 mile road, which will also be mailed out to residents. Transportation officials are also working to create mid block crossings like this one, not far from Commerce. Don Page, who is the president of the Timber Ridge Neighborhood Association, says he has lived in the area for 22 years and the problems along Culebra have not slowed down. There is increasing hazards in regards to more drivers driving fast and so uh, speed is an issue. Uh, we definitely need more enforcement uh, along this corridor to keep drivers reminded that we do have a speed limit. Now, I've been a part of some discussion groups and surveys over the last two years. Uh, that's promising but we're really ready to see some things start to happen out here to really improve the situation. Now that map with the 44 crosswalks is also available on our website. Just head over to KSAT.com to learn more. Reporting from the city's west side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And transportation officials say they will complete their study along Calabria Road by the end of the year. After that, they hope to reimagine that corridor in portions with the help of the 2022 bond program. And Safer Street's the theme of this month's Solutionaries episode. Solutionaries, by the way, a conversation style digital show tackling issues facing our community. It focused on solutions based journalism. For a look at this and other episodes, you can scan this QR code on the screen right now. Let's take a look outside with Sky 12, which is over the area we're talking about here. Calabria Road near Loop 410. That's where that pilot safety campaign is really focused on. 
You can see right now there's no problem on the roads. Of course, rain can be a problem out there, but man, it was a welcome sight. It really was. Even though the commute this morning was pretty messy for a lot of people, it was nice to see some rain, even some dried raindrops there right on that live cam. You know, it wasn't much rain in San Antonio, but it was something and really the healthier rains fell across areas west and southwest of San Antonio. Hi, Steve. Hi, Myra. Hi, Sarah. Hi, yeah, Sarah. we have seen quite a bit of rain out to the west. Let's go ahead and take a look out near Del Rio, Eagle Pass. Uh, you can see right near Lake Amistad, some of this good, healthy, heavier rain and near Quemado in uh, Maverick County. Now, the thing is, is that with these showers, they're very tropical in nature. And so earlier today, if you live out near Hondo, you may have actually been under a tornado warning earlier today. There was some indication that we could have some tropical funnels and we could end up having some tropical funnels with these through the evening. But I want to caution you tropical funnels. They often don't even reach the ground and they're fairly weak. Think about a water spout, but just on land. It remains a possibility through about sunset, but really this is just some good rain right along uh, the Rio Grande there. We're going to continue to keep you updated. I'll keep an eye on the radar. Uh, yeah, some of this rain is falling pretty hard too. In fact, what I can do is I can look at the rainfall rates right here near uh, Quemado and you can see in some of these areas. Whoop, let me go ahead and turn that back on. Uh, you can see in these purples. That's where we've got rainfall rates of about six inches an hour. That would mean that if this storm was to sit right over Quemado, it would drop six inches of rain. Now it's moving, it's grooving, so we're really not seeing uh, six inches of rain there. But the good news is, is that uh, these areas desperately need some rain. All right, back closer to San Antonio here. Really just some light rain showers west of 1604 along 90 toward Castroville, Rio Medina and Medina Lake. As you can tell, the rain is practically coming to an end around San Antonio. Uh, we are probably not going to see any anything much more this evening as that tropical low moves off to the west. But let's talk about the good news. Even though we didn't see a ton of rain in San Antonio, uh, our neighbors to the south and to the west of us saw plenty of rainfall. Catula, more than four inches of rain. Eagle Pass, more than an inch of rain, almost an inch in Del Rio. Laredo, more than two inches of rain. Hebronville, more than seven inches of rain. These areas are under extreme and exceptional drought, so this is going to be a welcome, welcome site for farmers and ranchers out there, especially across the Winter Garden region. Yeah, again, in San Antonio, only about a quarter of an inch of rain over the last 48 hours, but Castroville, more than an inch, Yavaldi, more than an inch, more than an inch and a half in Divine, almost an inch in Pleasanton, and about half an inch in Floresville. Coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to show your pictures of the rain through our KSAC Connect feature. I hope you'll uh, stick around for that. Right now, though, you can tell where the rain is. Temperatures in the 70s out near Hondo, Yavaldi, Spofford, Del Rio. That's where there's plenty of cloud cover, rain cooled air. It's still 87, though, in San Antonio. Look at that, 96 in Austin. Those areas just didn't see any rain up I-35. There's that low. You can see it very clearly spinning in a counterclockwise fashion. It's going to continue to push uh, to the west overnight through the big bend of Texas. And so throughout the evening till about midnight, we could still see some good rain for Del Rio Eagle Pass. Again, I'll be watching that radar carefully. But here in San Antonio, again, we're done with the rain and early tomorrow morning we will wake up with clouds, but those clouds will clear in the afternoon. It'll be a mostly sunny day for us, perhaps one or two coastal downpours, but the chance for rain is only 10% in San Antonio tomorrow afternoon. Waking up in the 70s and cloudy, those clouds will dissipate slowly. It'll be 80 by 10. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast shows temperatures in the upper 80s by noon. 88 was our high today. We'll already be at 88 by about lunch tomorrow. And then in the afternoon, forecasting a high temperature of 96, only a 10% chance for a coastal downpour. It's going to be a dry day tomorrow, but it will be humid. Dew points are going to stay in the 60s in the afternoon, so that means a heat index up to 100 to 102. If you're wanting more rain, like I want more rain, we've got a chance for rainfall Thursday and Friday, 30% isolated. We'll see if we can bump that up a little bit, but for now, just know that rain is possible Thursday and Friday. Your KSAT Connect features next pictures the next half hour. When's the last time we had a seven day forecast with no 100s mm -hmm. in it? Oh my goodness, this is one of the first times since since June. Yeah, it's been a long time. Bonus with rain chances. Yeah, exactly. Sarah.
All right, let's go out to Rutledge Stadium right now where the expectation for the Judson Rockets are huge every year, but this year there's some big expectations in College Station as well, Greg. Yeah, I tell you what, we're out here because of the case at Pigskin Classic 2022. We'll have a preview for you in just a moment. But before all that happens, the Aggies are ranked in the top 10 in the Associated Press preseason college football poll. We'll let you know where they landed and we'll preview the Justin Rockets looking to get back in the playoffs. How about that coming up? Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to Rutledge Stadium in Converse for a preview of the KSAC Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The Judson Rockets, which is their home, will be taking on the Johnson Jaguars in game two of our triple header in the Alamo Dome on August the 27th. Had that for you in just a moment, but first. The Fighting Texas Aggies are ranked sixth in the nation to open the 2022 college football season. That's according to the Associated Press preseason poll released today. Number six ranking matches the highest for the Aggies since earning the number three overall spot headed into the 1995 season, the 16th time the Aggies have earned a top 10 ranking in the first AP poll of the season. And even more to look forward to this season after senior defensive back Damani Richardson was asked if this is the deepest team he's seen since he's been in College Station. Yes, for sure. D-line wise, even though some of them are young, they're all are very talented. Um, linebackers, um, the kid from Houston or Louisiana, Martell, Martrell, he's good. Um, but I feel like, like all around, we've been um, we're like very rounded. We have a lot of depth, tight end, quarterback, uh, receivers. I just feel like we're real rounded, and we have like a lot of depth everywhere. All right, here's a look at that poll. Alabama is at number one with 54 first place votes, followed by Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame. Texas A&M checks in at number six. Utah, seven. Michigan, Oklahoma, Baylor at number 10. Number 24, Houston. TSA Roadrunners did not make the AP Top 25 in their preseason poll, even though they finished 12 and 2 like Houston and were the Conference USA champions. But they will host the number 24 team, Houston, in their season opener. That's on September the 3rd in the Alamo Dome. And can you believe it? That is just 20 days away from today. The Roadrunners continue with their fall camp today as head coach Jeff Trailer gets ready for his third season as head coach, coming off a school best season. Now it's about improving from what he has been able to build on. Safety Rashad Wisdom decided not to turn pro, return for his senior season. That's after he's named to the Conference USA first team for the second season in a row after leading UTSA in tackles with 88. But prepare for a little different look on defense. We got a lot of playmakers in that, in that back end now, so uh, there are going to be a lot of different things, a lot of different people on the field at, at different times, and um, a lot of people moving around, and, you know, that's just to give everyone an opportunity to go make a play and, uh, you know, just go have fun. All right, kickoff on September the 3rd in the Alamo Dome is set for 2.30 p.m. They're hoping for over 40,000 fans to pack the dome. One of the teams participating in the KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers are the Judson Rockets. They will challenge the Johnson Jaguars in the season opener in the middle game of our triple header on August the 27th in the Alamo Dome. Mark Soto returns to Converse where he played and coached for Judson and now his job is to right the rocket ship after a rare playoff miss last year with a 4-6 and six finish. He will have 14 starters back, 7 on offense, 7 on defense, including big defensive lineman Johnny Bowens at 6'4", 260 pounds. We're like a brotherhood over here. Um, that's what Coach Soto's really stressing. Um, I'm glad he's really pushing that on us. So, you know, that's really brought us all together. It's a mentality of uh, being able to ride for the brand and being able to, everyone playing for each other, playing for the people that have been here before, people that are going to be here in the future. What we've learned is if you keep your standards high, kids will raise to that standard and the expectation high. And I, I think our kids understand that. I think our community understands that. And remember, Coach Soto was the head coach at Johnson, making this a more, shall we say, intriguing matchup. Live from Converse, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Yeah, three intriguing ma matchups on that Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks, Greg. Good ones, yeah. What does NASA, San Antonio, and the moon have in common? What do they have in common? Well, it all has to do with the latest mission for advancement in space. We'll explain more next. And a brand new case that explains is after the break. And this one is all about second chances. Next.
believe in second chances. That is at the heart of this case that explains. Yeah, today we're going to take you to the Bear County Reentry Center, a place focused on getting people who are out of jail back on their feet. But so often that means much more than just a job, which can already be a huge hurdle. And today we introduce you to a man who knows that firsthand and a woman whose childhood and her faith led her to a lifetime of work on second chances. I ain't never killed nobody, never robbed nobody. I sold drugs, you know what I'm saying? It cost me my life. Don Christian is 48 years old. This is the first job he's ever had. He's been working at Toyo Tetsu, a manufacturer of Toyota parts for five years. He says, yes, it's had its challenges, but it's the decades before that that were the real struggle. 20 years. 20 years. 23 to be exact. 23 years in prison in his home state of Louisiana for selling drugs. Bro, I ain't here to tell you that, you know, I come from a broken home because I had both parents. You know, both my parents was always there, hard work, and it was just, I, you know, I'm gonna say peer pressure, you know, you, you won't be out there with the fellas or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Hurricane Katrina forced his mother to move to San Antonio, and when he got out of prison, Don followed. Like I was meant to be here because I fell in and I, you know, I've been excelling, you know. Don was hired through the Toyo Tetsu Second Chance Hiring Program, an effort to provide opportunities and recruit employees who've been incarcerated. That's a mission shared by the Bear County Reentry Center. Okay, so over here is our food pantry. Help here goes beyond getting former inmates a job. So we have hygiene items and food. So who would use this? So anybody coming out of jail, they sometimes come straight over here and we give them a bag of, you know, tuna fish and all kinds of stuff. So we don't somebody have here. may walk right out of the doors of the jail yes. and come straight here. Mm -hmm. Aida Negron has worked with those in jail and out for 30 years. And odd as it may sound, it's somewhat of a family business. When I was a little girl, my dad used to be a volunteer at the Bear County Sheriff's Office, and he was a chaplain. And so he would come home at night and tell us about how God had touched this person's life, and now he was going to be getting out, and it, it was he was a changed life. It was a lesson that stuck. Everybody has a purpose of why they're here in this earth, and I believe God put that in my heart to help this population because I don't feel like it's a, a job. I feel like it's a calling. The reentry center has services for anyone who's been in the jail system, no matter the offense. They provide things like utility assistance, clothing. We have shoes. Even parenting classes and yes, jobs. But that may not always be the first step. If after our assessment, we see that they are still using drugs or or in a and not living in a, in a stable home environment, we wouldn't want to send that person to go get a job because they don't have anywhere to live. That's where housing assistance or a recovery program may be offered. We have what they call MRT, uh, moral recognition uh, therapy. It's common sense things like if you go up to, you're driving along and you see this nice house and it's well manicured lawn and all that and you're thinking, well, somebody worked really hard and they got this place and they work on the yard and stuff and sometimes on criminal thinking would be is, okay, I wonder what's in that house and what to do. When it does come to jobs, the reentry center has a list of over 70 employers willing to hire someone who's been incarcerated. In my history of working in the criminal justice um, arena, I've never seen this many employers interested in this population. The current labor shortage has a lot to do with that. At Toyo Tetsu, administration has seen it firsthand. According to the Manufacturing Institute, one in four Americans have a background issue. And in this tight labor market, I don't know why any employer would want to exclude that large percentage of the population that could potentially come and work for you. We've learned that our second chance job seekers have better retention generally than people that come in through normal recruiting methods. Um, they're harder working and more dedicated. They've applied at other employers and have been turned down. 99% of the individuals that are convicted of something return to the community. And what, what shape do you want those individuals to return to? Do you want them more angry, more bitter? Uh, more schooled in, in the life of crime, or do you want somebody that's 
gotten the skills, you've given them the skills for jobs, you've given them the skills to uh, interpersonal relationships. For Don, it's the second chance he needed. And for the first time, it's given him a future. If a person look at me on, you know, from the from the surface, you know, you see the tattoos, you, know, you see the earrings, you know. I ain't gotta sell drugs no more to buy these earrings, you know what I'm saying? I got a car. You know, I'm paying on a house. And one day, he hopes to get his mom a house. She never doubted me. She never made me feel like, you know, she, you know, she, she disowned me or, you know, she always looked at me like, you can do this. A message that the reentry center passes on to. You believe people can change. I believe people can change. Absolutely. If you give a person a chance, you won't know until you know. That's why it's so good on the second time. You can find all of our KSAT Explained stories by scanning this QR code or go to ksat.com slash explains. Every week we take on a new topic, giving it context and perspective. Look for a new Explains next Monday at 630. We'll be right back. A new wave of online calls for violence. The FBI facing an unprecedented number of threats following the search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security issuing a bulletin over the weekend warning law enforcement, court and government personnel about a steep rise in online threats. The warning highlighted a threat to plant a dirty bomb in front of FBI headquarters and calls for civil war and armed rebellion. A Florida court removed information about the judge who signed the search warrant from its website after he became the target of violent threats. In 22 years in federal law enforcement with the FBI, I have never seen this level of threat. We have extremist elements who are, again, thinking they're being called to do something. And we need to have that calming voice from both sides. The FBI asking for the public's help in a statement they're asking anyone who sees something suspicious, say something, report it to law enforcement. NASA has contracted a San Antonio based company to work toward building materials on the moon. That company is Astroport. This is actually its second contract with NASA. The goal of the construction company is to build infrastructure for the moon by using moon dust. A space architect with Astroport explains for now their research will focus on learning how to melt moon dust and then mold it back into a solid for materials, plus create a landing pad on the moon. We actually have a, a technology milestone by 2026 to put our first technology demonstration robot on the lunar surface to prove as a proof of concept that we can actually make these bricks on the moon. And construction could begin in 2030. We'll be back after this. Moon brick. You know, on a hot day, there's nothing like ice cream to cool you down or maybe an ice cold beer. <laughs> How about both? Beer flavored ice cream. No joke, Miller High Life partnered with Tipsy Scoop to create the ice cream dive bar in honor of the 100th anniversary of the ice cream bar. The quintessential dive bar known for the smell of stale beer, great music, good times. Mm, let's roll I don't think that's what the yeah, I don't think that's what the ice cream's gonna taste okay, like. Okay, well listen to this flavor okay. though. You'd expect the ice cream is infused with high life along with a peanut swirl and Maybe this is where the dive bar element comes in. Also a bit of tobacco smoke flavor. Interesting. A lot, lot going on there. I would try one. Of course you would. <laughs> we now know what to call the latest addition to the Cincinnati Zoo's hippo exhibit, Fritz. The calf was born on August 3rd, and the zoo opened the vote to the public, who chose between Fritz and Ferguson. Hmm. More than 223,000 votes came in from the U.S. and dozens of countries, and Fritz came out on top. Fritz's older sister, Fiona, became a viral celebrity in 2017 when she was born premature, severely underweight. She also had a pen pal mm -hmm. from San Antonio. Timothy. Timothy. Our very own hometown yeah. hippo tried to woo Fiona. Didn't go well. Nope. Hopefully they're still friends. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. If you have a favorite Just way, <laughs> favorite way to relax, today might be the perfect day to do it. It is National Relaxation Day on a Monday, the annual day to focus on yourself. Many of us have a favorite activity to de-stress, but this day might be the chance to try something new. It turns out National Relaxation Day, not the brainchild of an adult, but someone much younger. 
The idea for the day credited to fourth grader Sean Moeller, or at least he was in fourth grade, in 1985, National Relaxation Day. And you know, perhaps nothing is as relaxing as the sound of rain. Oh my gosh, Isn't I was going to say. I was going to say. The and sound you just want to curl up and listen exactly. and watch. And our viewers have sent us some great scenes from around the city and they around really the viewing have. area. Absolutely, through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. This is a look at this morning. Yvonne says it was great to have water running down the curb there. Again, it was a little bit of a messy commute, but hey, we needed the rain. Uh, many folks saw maybe about a quarter of an inch of rain or so this morning, but out to the west, this is in uh, Natalia, you can see up to an inch of rainfall. They say so far, and this was a look yesterday. Yesterday we also had some good tropical bands. You could see just how fat those raindrops are around San Antonio. Again, good, good tropical moisture brought us some welcome changes to our forecast. As far as rainfall totals go for our weather watchers in Warren's backyard, almost six tenths of an inch of rainfall. In Talia's backyard, about an inch and a half out in Eagle Pass. So again, the heavier rainfall amounts out to the west. And then around San Antonio, again, a tenth to a quarter. Helen got about a half an inch of rain in Seguin and a two-day rain total in Lavernia of a little bit more than an inch. Temperatures today were kept in the 80s because of that. 88 degrees was the high temperature in San Antonio, uh, below average by about nine degrees. That's a nice welcome change. Outside right now, let's take a look at the radar. Not too much to see around San Antonio at the moment, but plenty of healthy rains across the ranches and farmlands out west toward Del Rio. Again, speaking of Del Rio, Valverde County, some healthy, heavier rain heading your way here, Del Rio, in just the next about 30 minutes or so. Uh, these are big tropical downpours, and we'll be keeping an eye on them, but they're moving, so we shouldn't see much of an issue when it comes to, uh, to flooding again, about to cross over the Rio Grande. And then meanwhile, back here in San Antonio again, you can see that the rain is pretty much done. Uh, for the evening. So looking ahead, it is going to be a bit of a quiet day tomorrow. This low pressure system is, is going to continue to push on off to the uh, west toward the Big Bend in Texas. And so with it, we'll go our rain chances at least temporarily. Take a look at the high rise future cast. Again, there could be some more showers and storms along Rio, uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass through about midnight, but it's going to stay quiet here in San Antonio. Early tomorrow morning, we'll wake up. It'll be cloudy. It'll be humid in the 70s, and then those skies will gradually clear We'll see plenty of sunshine in the afternoon, perhaps a coastal shower or storm. It's going to be a hot one tomorrow for sure. Temperatures are going to climb pretty quickly. 76 early in the morning, cloudy 88 at noon, 96 for the high temperature. So cooler than seasonably average by about a degree, but it's going to stay humid tomorrow. Southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at forecast highs in your neighborhood. It'll be 92 in Del Rio, 94 in Valley, 94 in Carrizo Springs, even hotter out to the east, 97 Canyon Lake, 100 in Austin, 93 in Beeville, 96 in Pleasanton. A closer view here around San Antonio. Hello to us. You'll be at 93 tomorrow, 97 in Seguin, 98 in New Braunfels. But here's the thing. Tropical air means high humidity. Humidity will be high tomorrow. It's going to feel like 100 to 102 out there tomorrow. So that humidity, you'll really feel it. What didn't rain a ton in San Antonio, but that ground has enough moisture in it to keep the humidity high now uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Wednesday will be at 98, close to 100 on Thursday, but Thursday and Friday, if you want more rain, that's looking like a day, the, a couple of days there that we could see some more isolated to widely scattered downpours. A 30% chance right now, but we may be able to bump that up. Keep that KSAT Weather Authority app handy. I'm going to be posting a more in-depth look at rainfall totals later on tonight on the app. Alrighty, thank you, Sarah. In case you missed it, coming up next. It's Monday, the 15th of August. This morning, rain being blamed for a very messy crash involved an Amazon truck. It's a big rig that hydroplaned on I-35 near AT&T Central Parkway. It landed in a barbecue restaurant. That happened about four in the morning. The truck slid through a guardrail on I-35, crossed the access road, and then slammed into the front of a Grady's barbecue, which was closed at the time. The scattered packages from inside the trailer were transferred to another truck. The driver was not hurt. Crews trying to figure out what sparked an overnight house fire on the city's south side. It happened around 1.30 this morning on West Malone, right off of I-35. 
We say flames broke out by the garage door and then crawled up a wall. Firefighters were able to knock down the flames without anyone getting hurt. Damages are said to be worth around $5,000. Capitol Police investigating a bizarre incident. A man crashes into a U.S. Capitol barricade, jumps out of his vehicle and starts shooting a gun into the air, then shoots himself. U.S. Capitol Police Chief says the suspect was a 29-year-old resident of Delaware with a criminal history. Authorities are now looking through security footage to determine a possible motive. Northside Park got a unexpected visitor. It was a 50-pound African spur tortoise, and officials with Animal Care Services say that the tortoise, Walter O'Hare, was found by Good Samaritans who were out on a stroll near Phil Hardberger Park. Now, ACS says these kind of tortoises are not native to San Antonio, so they believe it may be someone's pet that wandered off or was let loose. Walter now resides at the Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Incorporated, northwest of the Canyon Lake area. With the rain moving west, we're going to warm up 96 tomorrow, 98 Wednesday, close to 100 Thursday. But rain chances do go back up Thursday and Friday, so keep your fingers and toes crossed for another splash and dash shower. Fingers and toes. My toes are crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Good. When you really need it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat at 10.